Hey guys, Quiv the Lazy Geek here and today we have to take some flats. What are flats? Well, um, they're basically magic and uh, it's when you have a telescope or a camera lens with a camera and you have dust uh, modes somewhere, you'll get a very ugly little black circle on your image or a very l l ugly little black donut on your image depending on your telescope. And um, you would never notice it in daily use of a camera because you're not really like taking very low signal to noise ratio pictures. But when you're doing astrophoto, it's a big issue. And for that, you take flat frames. Flat frames are basically a frame without any signal besides the dust modes or, you know, camera vignetting. Uh, that vignetting is something that camera people are very used to, uh, which is the darkening of the corners of your sensor due to basically the imaging circle of your lens not being enough to completely fully cover uh, in a very flat way your, your sensor. And for normal photographers, there's like Lightroom that has like lens correction stuff with a collection of lenses that you can apply. And for astrophotographers, we use flat frames because flat frames correct for both dust and for um, the, uh, the optical, optical aberrations of the system. And there's many ways to take flat frames. And uh, one of them is to simply uh, use like a t-shirt. Uh, that's pointed to a bright wall or the sky or that kind of stuff and then take an exposure so that your histogram is more or less at 30 to 50 percent of the way so you're not overexposing you're not underexposing and then you can apply that to your image and everything gets corrected and everything is magical and the world is full of butterflies that are very colorful with unicorns dancing around it. it's awesome i've kind of gone slightly off of balance here anyway what i do and I've, I've used the t-shirt method, I've used the sky flat method, I've used the wall method, I've used so many methods, they all kind of work, uh, but I have now found that my ultimate tool for that, it is this. This is beautiful, it is a thing of beauty. It is an artist sky flat field generator panel, which is basically a big white LED. Doesn't that sound exciting? Let's see what's inside. So, if I open this first, there's a case. You know that I love cases. Cases are beautiful. And I'm going to open that and we're going to first take out a power adapter. It's not really a power adapter, it's just a cigarette plug with a thingy there that has two holes for like. Yeah. I don't like that. I prefer the standard DC input. I'm sure they have a good reason for that. It's the same, I think, connector used for the my EQ6R mount here, which I do not like uh, much either um, because I don't really have cigarette, cigarette plug sockets with me except this where I can just put cigarette socket in there and then I can use it as is. And this is what I'm going to do today to take my flat frames. And then we have mm, this beauty here. It's a big white circle. Amazing! Except that it has tons of features and it's awesome. The biggest thing about this is that it has a very, very smooth uh, flatness as far as I can tell and it will cover your telescope and I'll show that in a moment how I take that and uh, you can see at the at the other side there's a little cover on the um, on the um, power input on the DC power input there is also a an actual switch to turn it off and on which is not the case for all flat field panels uh, many of them will just like you know light up the moment you connect them to power so that's a nice touch and then there's this volume button well not quite volume button but light intensity button and that's awesome because that means i can use flats of the same length always and then i have an, i have an actual uh, dark flat uh, library and Dark flat or flat darks, it's up to you. I think the de facto standard is dark flats, uh, but grammatically it should be flat dark, something like that. Who cares? Um, it's basically the dark frames that you're going to calibrate your flats with to remove the noise in your flats. Um, and I have a library of those. And I can use exactly the length that I want thanks to the uh, very precise um, adjustments that I can do with this flat panel. 
And here you'll see there's a little screen with my current level of brightness of the flat panel, which is great because then I can just, you know, come back to the same level that I was using last time. Note that this flat panel is the manual type. There is a USB control type, but the USB control type has 256 levels, if I remember correctly, of brightness are possible. Uh, this one has more, as far as I can tell. So I, and I, I like being able to just do it manually. Uh, I, I think either works great. Of course, what's important is the actual flatness of the field. And I think this is uh, absolutely great. So let's get all of this connected and I'll connect it to my scope and show you how I take my flats. So see you in a moment. Okay, so before we start taking the flats, I'm going to first prepare the telescope for basically being able to put the flat panel onto it. So there's tons of ways to do that. For me, the easiest is to just point the telescope to the zenith and uh, plop a flat panel on top of it. And there's many ways you can do that. You can do that with the hand paddle. You can do that like, you know, any, any way you like manually. Just what I'm just going to do is I'm going to use uh, Nina, which has a handy, handy dandy little tool to just point to Zenith automatically. But first things first, I'm going to connect the camera uh, and then start cooling it to my target temperature of minus 10, just so that we're ready to take the flats when I want to take them. And then I'm also going to connect the telescope and the filter wheel to make sure we're on the right filter for taking my flats. Today I'm going to take my flats for the L filter because we're using my uh, color camera and we are on the L filter, everything is fine. And um, yeah, I'm going to connect the, the focuser while I'm at it, uh, why not? And let's go to, uh, now that everything's connected, I'm going to go to the mount menu itself, which is EQ mod for Skywatcher. So this is a great little um, a free tool and I'm going to unpark uh, the mount so that it can actually move and we're going to go to uh, the flat wizard here and you can see there's the slew to zenith from east or west it really doesn't matter whether it's west, east or west because as far as i know it actually stops tracking when it reaches that position but i'm going to select west so that i'm sure that i don't get into any m problems with the meridian flip which is uh, what happens when your counterweight bar kind of gets above horizontal and the scope below horizontal and that's a bad thing. So let's slew to Zenith and this telescope was slew to Zenith. Once the slew is over, I'll be connecting my flat panel to actually put it on top of that, uh, of that telescope and we will be ready to take our flats. The telescope is, sh is slewed, let's get to it. So first, let's go back to this amazing flat panel. I'm going to actually connect it to power. I have a power outlet here, which is very conveniently located. And then here, we're just going to turn it on. And poh, it's bright, it's amazing, it's beautiful. And it's flat, <laughs> amazing. Uh, and you can see on the side here, I have an actual number, which I can use to determine like how bright I am being with this uh, flat panel. And what, what we're going to do, it's very, very simple. We're just going to plop it on the telescope <laughs> easy and uh i think i'm good at like 22.1 something like that if i remember correctly so now i have a much lower light intensity it can get very bright it can get very dark it is super convenient okay here i am and now i'm gonna go back to the computer software to actually take my flat frames okay so we're back at the computer uh well there's a lot of wind um and we're going to uh, now take our flat frames. Now taking the flat frames is not really uh, difficult. And there is actually, you see a flat wizard in this software called Nina, which is free, open source and awesome. Um, but let's do it the old fashioned way. That's what I've always been doing is manually, uh, which so you can do that with pretty much any piece of software that you like. First, I want to check where my camera is on the cooling level. And we can see we are at my target at minus 10 degrees. So I am all ready to take my flats. Then I go to, an, in Nina it's the imaging tab, uh, anywhere else it probably would be the preview tab, whatever. And I actually have already set my exposure time to 1.5 seconds, which is what I like my flats to be at. Depending on, ca on, on your camera, you may want longer flats. Like for example, the ASI 294 MC Pro, flats are re recommended to be at least two or three seconds. And then you can just adjust the intensity of the light panel to, uh, to reduce the uh, to basically have the proper uh, exposure time for your flat frames. Now we're going to take just one exposure and see how that exposure looks like 
in uh, the imaging tab. And you can see that at uh, 1.5 seconds, this is very disappointing. I was uh, looking at 30, I wanted to get 30%. We're almost exactly like where I wanted to get. You can see the histogram is kind of one third of the way, but maybe it's actually one fourth of the way. So we want to actually, you know, brighten up that flat frame a little bit. Right, so what I'm going to do, I could simply, you know, change the exposure time. That works too. Um, but you know, I like to have my 1.5 seconds because I already have dark flats uh, for that, or flat darks, whichever. And we're going to increase the li luminosity a little bit there. And, and by the way, this this flat panel, like if you you turn this knob faster, it increases faster. I mean, it's it's very well done. I mean, <laughs> it seems like I'm raving at very basic stuff, but. It is something that I, uh, I really like. And now the actual flat frames are more or less in the middle of the histogram. Uh, some people would say that this is perfect. This is exactly what we want. I personally don't really like that. Um, I prefer to just go a bit more uh, down to lower the intensity a little bit. Let's see, what do we get now? Okay, we're a bit uh, above where we started. Where we started, I'm gonna do it a bit brighter. Hopefully, I think I turn in the right direction. I always get confused. Uh, but yes, it's a bit brighter. Uh, we're almost at one third. I think many people recommend fifty percent of the histogram. I, I I've been told a long time ago one third, and so I keep going for one third. And here it is. We're at one third. And you can see that there are some uh, dust motes. Uh, it might be very difficult to see, but you can see there's definitely one here at the top level that will be corrected by my flats. So this is, you know, this is why we're taking flats. We are correcting this dust mode. We're correcting the vignetting. It is awesome. So let's do this. Uh, now I'm going to go into the sequencer for Nina. Uh, for, your, for your software, it could be anything. And we're going to set my exposure time to 1.5 seconds. Uh, the type of the frame will be a flat frame. The filter will be the L filter. That way I know which filter I took my flats for because you really want to take your flats, or like one set of flats for one filter. And I don't want to dither, I don't want to uh, bin, I don't want to do anything. We're just gonna take, I'm gonna call my tablet, my target like flats. All right, there we are. And I'm gonna take something like 25 exposures. 25 exposures, not 125, 25 exposures. Um, I'm also going to make sure in Nina that uh, in my imaging options, I do not uh, park the mouse or warm the camera as the sequence ends <laughs> so that this thing doesn't start slewing while the flat panel is on it. But that's specific to Nina. And then I'm just going to click uh, start sequence. And now we're taking our exposures for our flats and we'll just wait until it's done and then we'll have our flats. And our flats can be stacked as part of the pre-processing process for when we've taken our target. So you'll, you'll take 25 flat, flats. There's a way in software like PixInsight to, to basically stack them together and then use them to correct your, um, your light frames, your actual exposures of starscapes. And this is pretty much it uh, for flats. Let's wait until the process is done. And um, I'll, uh, I, I think that's, uh, that's it. So I'm going to show uh, just like how the final uh, uh, flat frame looked like in the end. Um, and thanks for watching today. Uh, if you like this video, please like, please subscribe. Uh, there's tons of new content coming soon. And uh, thanks for watching. I hope this was useful and I'll see you next time.